Okay, so moving on from block uh, attention, let's look at one more method. Uh, for reducing the time complexity of the attention mechanism and this is uh, based on the uh, empirical observation that attention is low rank right what do what do we mean by that so uh, so so far we have looked at different ways right uh, and we have been able to get the complexity down to sub quadratic where c is a constant and uh, can we reduce it to otd right can we get rid of the c also uh, yes, but not in a very useful way. You could just have every token attend to itself, right? But that does not help in any way. Uh, so we would want something uh, where uh, we reduce the complexity, uh, but are mindful about what computations we are uh, ignoring or what are the computations that are not being done, right? And here there was this uh, empirical observation uh, that was useful that the self attention matrix is essentially a low rank matrix and so what does that uh, mean let's try to understand so here's an experiment that was uh, done there's this roberta model which was trained in it was trained on some uh, data uh, with the mlm objective right and then they did an spd on the attention matrix a right across different layers and different heads uh, they did this svd and then they plot the, so the attention matrix of course depends on the input, right? So you have a sentence passing through, then you compute the attention matrix and then you have many heads. So you compute the attention matrix of all the heads and then you have many layers. So you compute the attention heads across all these layers, right? So all of these, uh, uh, what they did is that each of these attention matrices, they did a singular value uh, decomposition, right? And that sort of gives you the uh, eigen values, right? So the, in the singular value decomposition, you would have done this in the earlier course uh, that I offer, where you have A is equal to U sigma V transpose, and sigma has a is a diagonal uh, matrix which is uh, which has the singular values, right? And now if those singular values are very small, then it means that those dimensions are actually not. Uh, uh, not very important for the reconstruction of A, right? That's uh, the basic overview of what NSVD or singular value decomposition is. You can go and check my other videos on that. Um, now, what they did is they plotted the distribution of the eigenvalues, right? So, uh, this is a 5 and 2 cross 5 and 2 matrix, right? So, you can get 5 and 2 eigenvalues. And let's say those eigenvalues were, let me just say, lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way up to lambda 5, 1, 2, okay. Uh, then they are, what they are plotting here is the normalized uh, singular value, right. So, what that means is they take the largest one, actually I should have written sigma 1, sigma 2, but it is okay, I can, notation does not matter. So, now what they have done is, suppose you had some lambda max, right, the largest eigenvalue from this set. So, they divide everything by that largest uh, eigenvalue, right. Uh, so, then all of these will now, all of these ratios would now be between 0 to 1, right, because lambda max is greater, is the largest element. So, one of these would be lambda max. So, lambda max divided by itself would of course give you 1, but everything else would be less than 1, right. So, all of these would be between 0 to 1 uh, and we are looking only at uh, absolute values here. Um, now, if you plot them, right, so now uh, you could, uh, so now they plot the normalized cumulative eigenvalue, right, so they are plotting like the normalized sum of the uh, eigenvalues, okay, and uh, if you look at it, that the initial uh, 128 eigenvalues, right, you are already at around 0.9 plus, that means these are called contributing to 90 percent of the sum and the remaining uh, 384 eigenvalues are contributing very little to the sum, right. That means these are not very significant and hence this is sort of an empirical proof that the uh, uh, attention matrix is actually a low rank uh, matrix, right, because if you look at the first 128 eigenvalues, they are contributing maximum to the sum of these, normalized sum of these, uh, normalized cumulative sum of the eigenvalues, right. So, that is that's what is happening here. Uh, and so, this was an empirical proof that it is indeed a low rank matrix. So, if it is a low rank matrix, like what do we do with it? Okay, your attention is a low rank matrix. That means we do not need, uh, if you look at the singular value decomposition, 
So you don't need all the 5 and 2 singular values and uh, you don't need, so you can write this as summation sigma i ui vi transpose, right? So ui vi transpose is of course a matrix because it's an outer product of two uh, vectors, right? And this i is 1, 2, 5, and 2. So there are 5 and 2 terms in this uh, sum. Uh, so a is equal to this sum and if the sigmas are small, those terms of the sum are not really contributing, right? So you don't need so many terms. You don't really need 5 and 2 terms. And that's the problem that they were trying to um, sort of focus on. Well, 5 and 2 here is the sequence uh, length, right? So you don't need uh, all of these uh, entries are not important, right? So what did they uh, do? They said that, okay, you have the QKV, okay, which is T cross T matrix. Now you introduce two learnable projection matrices. We'll see what, what is the need for these projection matrices and how do they help. And they are EF is K cross T, where of course uh, K is going to be less than T, right? And maybe very, very less than T also it can be, right? So let's see where it shows up now. So this is just a matrix for now, right? It's a K cross T matrix where k is less than t and we are going to use it in the computation. Now what are we doing here, right? We are saying that uh, <coughs> k is uh, t cross d, right? And e is k cross t, uh, q of course is t cross d, right? So now if you are going to multiply these two matrices, okay? you will get a k cross d matrix and since k is less than t, you are getting a smaller matrix which will now get multiplied by q. Earlier you had q k transpose, right? So the time complexity of that was t cross d uh, multiplied by t cross d, yeah, multiplied by d cross t. So this was uh, t square d was the complexity, right? Now what have you done? You have introduced this smaller matrix here. So the complexity of this matrix multiplication is going to be k into t into d, right? So there's no t square term yet here. And now I'll take the, so the, the dimension of the resulting product is going to be k cross d and then there's a transpose here. So it would be t cross k and that will get multiplied by the q matrix which is t cross d. So now this multiplication again is of the complexity t d k which is the same as this, right? So now you are able to do this computation in order k t d as opposed to t square order t square d, right? So that's what this linear uh, projection is helping. That's what this matrix in between is helping you do. And the reason you're doing that is because just as you reconstruct the, uh, you can think of A now as being recomputed from these three matrices, like just as you have A is equal to U sigma uh, V transpose. Now you are con reconstructing A from these three matrices and the middle matrix you have sort of shrunk, right? So that, that is uh, from the uh, observation that the uh, matrix A is a low rank matrix. So you have used a lower number of rows there, K only, uh, small k. And that's, that's what is helping you to sort of reduce the overall time complexity of the computation, right? But now, of course, the output of this is going to be T cross K, right? This is no longer T cross D but it's going to be T cross uh, K is the output of this product, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, so this is T cross D and this is uh, K cross D. So this will become K cross D and then the transpose T cross K multiplied by T cross D. So it's going to be T cross K, right? So that's the, uh, <coughs> the attention matrix is going to be T cross uh, K now. And then when you want to get the output, right? Because at the output, you need all the uh, 5 and 2 tokens to be uh, regenerated. So now what they have done again is this is T cross K, F is again K cross T and the matrix, original matrix V was T cross D, right? So now these two will first multiply to give you a T cross T matrix and that will multiply by this T cross D to give you a T cross 
uh, sorry that will multiply by this t cross d matrix to finally give you a t cross d output and that's what our output has always been right for all the t tokens we have a d dimensional representation after the self attention operation right and here again this matrix multiplication uh, is going to be uh, so you have f into v which will give you a time complexity of k t d and then that would be a k cross d uh, matrix which will get multiplied by a t cross k a matrix right and this is the product f into v so this two multiplication will again be of complexity k t d right so again you are order k t d complexity so this operation was order k t d and now this operation is also order k t d so you are still order k t d you are not quadratic in t right so that is how uh, they reduce the time complexity by exploiting the low rank nature of the attention uh, matrix, right. So these are all the methods that I wanted to cover for reducing the time complexity of the attention mechanism. So I will pause this video here and we will come back and talk about uh, fast inference methods for uh, attention.